Hi, I'm Tanya Jenka and I want to talk to you about Log4j and Log4j Shell. Basically, this is a dependency, so it's a piece of software, a library, that gets included in a lot of pieces of software. And what it does is it logs stuff. So, this user logged in successfully, this user failed at logging in, but they tried three more times and then they finally remembered their password and they got in. Stuff like that, like what your app is doing. You, if you are using any software, are potentially vulnerable. And this includes a SaaS product. So let's say there's an application that schedules all of your meetings for you. And it doesn't run on your servers or your computer personally, it runs out on the internet somewhere. They might get attacked and it might mess with you. So why is it so scary? It's scary because it's basically everywhere. And it's scary because the attack is just copy and paste just like a couple of characters into any search bar, into any field anywhere, and you press enter and then it goes and it tries to attack. It's so scary. If the attack works, which unfortunately it is all over the internet, what happens is basically it can take over your entire computer. So if you as a user, a home person, you have a laptop, it can take over your computer and start doing things and it can talk to the other computers where you live if they're on the same network and attack them too. If you work somewhere, like I do, I work at a lot of places, it can actually attack the other computers. So someone you know, goes to one of the apps that I'm supposed to protect, it does this thing, if it has this vulnerability, suddenly it's on that web server and it's trying to talk to other web servers, it's trying to call home and get more code so it can attack other things. The ease of the attack, how widespread it is, and the fact that the attack is complete takeover is absolutely, like it's the three things that we measure risk on and all of them are at 100% scary. And it's just, it's absolutely, it's terrifying. So now you're scared, you're like, what do I do? If you are a software developer, you need to search all your code repos and look for it and see if you have it. Then if you do have it, look at if you've got version two point something or if you have one point something. If you have two point something, you're in trouble, you're vulnerable, you gotta do something. If you have one point something, it depends on if you're using certain parts. So that as a side thing, look up 1.x log j4 and then look into that to see if you're vulnerable. Okay, so let's see, let's assume, so if you're not vulnerable, like just be really happy and go home, but chances are if you're a human that has more than one piece of software, you could be vulnerable. So software developers, let's continue. So you are vulnerable. Check to see if it's deployed. It sounds dumb, but I have been looking with clients and a bunch of them, the stuff just wasn't deployed. I'm like, never deploy that. Mark something to not deploy that until it's patched. If you are in a position where you can quickly update to the patch, there's a patch available now. It's 2.15 point something. Go look on the internet because they keep improving it. So 2.15 point, there's point one and now there's point two. So just go look for the newest one and get that one. Most of us are not in a position where we can just patch immediately. It's really hard. And so what you can do is a few things. So if you're behind a CDN, a content network delivery service, or you're behind a WAF, great. Put on those rules to block that. So CloudFront, Cloudflare, uh, like any type of, of WAF, so like F5, mod security. I like, I'm not trying to, it just, if you have a WAF, you probably know, hopefully. So put the rules up and protect yourself. Awesome. Monitor as well. And what you're looking for is if your little web server starts trying to send requests out. So not responses. So the way web servers usually work is someone on the internet wants something and it sends a request to the web server and the web server is like, hey, I got you. And then it responds back. Web servers don't generally send requests out to the internet. That's less often. And if it is, it's usually to an API that you know about. Like let's say you're gonna do a map and you call like Apple Maps or Google Maps or I don't know, Netscape, some old thing, whatever. Um, you use those things to call out, that's rare. And you'll be like, oh yeah, those guys are okay. Right, but if it's calling out anywhere else that you don't recognize, bing, 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 very bad, turn that server off. So if you can, and so like you can't patch right now, if you absolutely must, it sounds nuts, turn them off just for right now, and then write some code to try to turn off the logging. So this is gonna sound weird, but like 
you have dependencies, you call those dependencies. That's why they're there. Remove the dependency, figure out all the places it's being called because you press compile and it's like, this doesn't work anymore. So go to that part of the code, comment all of that out, make sure it compiles, redeploy like that. So turn off logging just for now and then start on your plan to upgrade all the things. If you are a regular person and software developers, you're also regular people. So you're regular people plus. So every single person, you have a computer, that's how you're watching this, right? Update all your software. If there's an update, you click yes. Go open all your software, check for updates and click yes. Do this every day for the next seven days. I'm not kidding. Go to your home router. Do updates on that if you can. Check with your home router or your internet provider and say, hey, is there a patch for this? Because I'm scared. Call your mom, call your grandma, call your friends, call your family, call all the people and tell them to do that too. Because guess what's gonna happen as an IT professional, if they get hacked, they're gonna call you. So take a preemptive strike and go and try to get everyone to update everything and continue to update everything for about a week. And then we're probably gonna be okay. Then search the internet again to see if you're fine or not. We can do this. We're gonna get past this but we need to take action now in order to do that. If you have questions, respond in the thread. I'm gonna do the best I can to help everyone. Oh yeah, um, I'm Tanya Janka. Hi, I'm SheX Purple, I'm a nerd. Uh, and I want us to get through this successfully together. We can do this. Okay, let's go.